In this video, we'll give you an introduction to the support settings in ChuduBox. If you want to add or edit support structures in ChuduBox, you can click the support settings tab to enter the support editing mode. The first setting you will see is the Z lift height. When you enter the support editing mode, the software will raise the model a bit from the ground. This option determines how much the model will be raised. The reason why we set a lift height is to try to prevent the model from touching the platform, so the bottom few layers of the model won't get overcured. The so-called elephant foot issue. And also this can avoid the overhangs around the lowest surfaces will get too low to be supported. Below the lift height setting is the support setting where you can configure the size and form of your support structures. You can decide how thick your support is. For example, you can choose to add a light, medium, or heavy support. One thing you may want to know is that lighter supports is more possible to get broken, and thicker supports may be harder to remove. So you should choose the right settings according to your requirements. You can also change the settings for different parts of your supports, such as top, middle, bottom, or raft. Below is the auto manual support settings. Here you can change the settings for cross structure and density and max tilting angle for the auto supports. Know that you can import or export the support settings or the auto manual support settings to backup or recover these settings. If you want to restore them back to the default, you can click the reset button to reset them. To know more, please watch the import export configurations video. Next is the auto support adding feature, that is the add platform and add all buttons. This will instruct the software to judge where on your models need support, and then add support structures to all those places. If you click the add platform button, all the support structures will start only from the grid platform. And if you click add all, there can be some additional supports, starting from the model itself. Below those two buttons, on the left side, is an eye icon. Clicking it will hide or show all your support structures. Next to this icon are the Add, Delete, Edit support buttons. If you click the Add support button, you can add supports manually. If you click Delete support, you can click to select a support and press the Delete key on your keyboard to delete it. If you click the Edit support button, you can select a support and then drag it to change its position or adjust its settings. Finally, the Remove All button at the bottom can remove all your support structures in one click. When editing supports, you will see some short lines on the bottom surfaces and overhangs of a model, indicating the possible support adding positions. You can choose to show or hide these lines in the Settings menu. The settings for the top part of a support. The top part refers to the part that has a cone shape and contacts the model surface. The top settings are divided into two sections, the contact settings and the connection settings. In the contact settings, you can change the contact shape. If you choose none, there will be no extra contact shape. The support will directly contact the model surface. If you select sphere, there will be a ball shape contact. You can adjust the contact diameter to change the contact shape size. You can also change the contact depth. This decides how deep the contact part is buried into the model surface. Contact shape diameter and depth decides the contact area size between the model and the support structure and affect the integrity of the print. If the contact area is too small, the contact part may not be strong enough, so the supports or the contact parts may break away during printing. If the area is too big, it would be harder to remove the support structures. And after removal, you would see divots and raised marks on the surface, so you may need to do some extra work in post-processing. In the connection settings, you are also allowed to change its shape. The shape options include cone, pyramid, and skate. 
you can change the upper diameter, that is the diameter of the end, closer to the model surface. And lower diameter, the end further away from the model. You can also adjust the connection length. This determines the length of the top part body. The size of this connection part can also affect the printing outcomes. If the diameters are set too small, the connection will be too thin, so it may be easier for your print to fail. If the connection is too thick, then it may be harder to remove the support structure. Also, the connection should not be too long. Otherwise, if the material is not strong enough, it will increase the risk of breaking away. The settings for the middle part of a support. The middle part refers to the main column body that is vertical to the ground. You can change its shape in the settings. You can choose cylinder, cube, or prism. You can also adjust the diameter to make it thicker or thinner. The angle setting is the minimum angle between the middle and top parts. In most cases, it is used to change the angle of the supports added on the surfaces vertical to the ground. If it's larger, it would be harder for the generated support structures to hold the model. If it's smaller, there would be more area of the top part stuck to the model. How thick or thin of the middle parts can also affect the print results. It should not be too thin or you will be likely to see print failures. The middle parts are the main bodies of the support structures and it sometimes hold more than one top parts. So it is always suggested that you use a large diameter and larger than the top diameter. You may experience stuttering or lagging issues on the software when you have added a lot of supports. In this case, you can try changing the middle shape to prism. This would help the software to run smoother. There are also small pillar settings in the middle support settings. Small pillars are the small short supports that are on the model with both ends touching the model surfaces. You can change its shape to cone, none, or sphere. There are also the diameter setting. And the upper or lower depths, which decide how deep both ends are buried into the model surfaces. For these small pillars, if their diameter is set too small, it's easier for them to fail to hold the model. If they are too thick, they will stick more to the model, which makes it harder to remove these supports and easier to destroy the details on the model surface. The bottom part and the wrap settings for the supports. The bottom part refers to the part that touches the grid platform. There are multiple shapes for this part, which include skate, cone, cube, cylinder, prison, and none, that is there will be no shape, and the bottom of the support directly touches the platform. There are also settings like touch diameter, which allows you to change its size, and thickness, that is how thick that part will be. If you have multiple supports, their bottom parts may overlap each other and form a plate. If it's large enough in area, it can work as a raft, and at this time, it's not necessary to add a real raft. The lower section are the settings for the supports, whose bottom ends touch the model surfaces. Its default contact shape is none, which means there will be no contact shape, but you can choose sphere, that is, use a ball shape for the contact part. You can change the diameter of the contact or its depth equally how deep it's buried into the model. 
Moreover, there is a contact point setting. By default, it's set to one, but you can change it to two or three, and the support will branch out two or three points onto the surface. Multiple contact points make the support structure more stable, but it will increase your work in clearing the marks left by these additional points. The raft refers to the plate generated at the bottom of the supports and touching the platform. It is used to increase the contact area between the model and the platform. It can also resolve the forces on the supports and make sure they stick to the platform firmly. To ask the software to generate a raft, you need to change the raft shape setting to skate. The raft area is decided by the raft area ratio setting. It is the ratio of the area of the raft to the area projected by the model to the platform. If this value is higher, the raft area will be larger. The raft thickness setting decides how thick the main body of the raft is. If this value is higher, the raft will be thicker. The raft height is basically the height of the outer edges. If this setting is higher, the raft will have higher edges. The raft slope determines the angle between the side planes and the platform. It determines how much the side planes tilt. If this value is higher, they will tilt less. In most cases, you shouldn't set the raft too large or thick. Otherwise, you will have to print multiple layers of large area continuously, and the peeling forces and sometimes gravity will make the raft less adhesive to the platform, which causes the print more likely to fail. The auto manual support settings. The auto manual support settings include the cross structure settings and the settings for density and angle. They will take effect when adding auto supports. And the cross structure settings can also affect your supports when you manually add support structures. Cross structures are the X shaped structures generated between two supports. There are two cross structure settings cross width and cross start height. The cross width refers to the largest distance between two neighboring supports. The software will add the cross structures too. If two supports are closer than this distance, they will get cross structures, otherwise there won't be any cross. Cross start height is the minimum support height that the software will add cross structures to. The supports need to be higher than this setting so they can get cross structures. If this value is small, then the short supports will have cross structures. If this value is large, then only the longer supports will get cross structures. Cross structure increases the connection stability for supports. It lowers the possibility of deformed supports and enhances the rigidity of the structures. Cross structures can also help printing a support successfully even if some place of that support is broken. If cross start height is set too low, when the support broken point is at the same place as the cross structure, the cross will fail. If the start height setting is too high, when two adjacent supports are both broken, the cross structure can also fail. The density setting determines how many supports will be added to the same support areas. If the density setting is low, there will be less supports added. If the density is high, there will be more and dense supports. If the density is too low, the support structures are not strong enough to hold the model, and they can be easily broken. If the supports are too far away from the edges of the model, then those areas won't get enough supports, and the model will be deformed or fail. Angle setting refers to the maximum surface angle the software will add supports to. When adding auto supports, the software will decide what surfaces require supports, and the criteria is the angle between the surface and the support. The software will add supports to those surfaces with the angle between zero, which is parallel to the platform, and some degrees. So the angle setting here determines the maximum value of this range. If the angle of a surface is smaller than this setting, then this surface will get supports. Otherwise, there won't be any support on that surface. If the angle setting is higher, there will be more surfaces with supports. If this value is lower, there will be less surfaces have supports.
If this angle setting is too small, there can be some risky areas that get no supports, which can cause the print to fail. If the angle is too large, there will be too many surfaces that get supports. This can cause waste of material and extra post-processing time. Add, delete, and edit support. The Add Support mode allows you to manually add supports on a model. Once you've clicked the Add Support button or press the A key on your keyboard, you can click a place on a model and a support will be added there. When you are in the Add Support mode, you may see a green transparent support following your mouse cursor. This is the support preview. It shows how a support would look like if it was added at the mouse cursor pointing position. If you don't want to see the preview, you can open the settings window and turn off the preview support option. And next time you won't see the support preview, you can watch the setting explained tutorial video to know more about the software settings. The delete support mode allows you to delete the whole or a part of a support. Once you click the delete support button or press the D key on your keyboard. If you click the middle or bottom part of a support and press the delete key on your keyboard, you will delete the whole support. Or if you click the top part and press delete, then only the top part will be removed. The edit support mode allows you to edit the support added on your model. Once you've clicked the edit support button, or press the E key on your keyboard. If you click the middle or bottom part of a support and drag it, this will change the support position. Know that this won't change the support contact position on the model. If you click and drag the top part, this will move the contact position. You can also click and select any part of a support and modify its settings. This will change the shape of that part accordingly. Finally, let's talk about how to add branching or tree supports. In Chittlebox, you can add not only one top branch on the support. To add multiple branches and form a tree structure, first you need to click and enter the Edit Support mode. Then double click the sphere, connecting the top and middle part. If you've enabled Support Preview, you will see a Support Branch Preview appear from the sphere to your mouse cursor. At this time, if you click a model surface, this will add that branch at that place. Repeat the steps above, and you will get multiple branches. To exit the tree support editing, you can press the escape key on your keyboard, or double click an empty area. If you want to delete some of these branches, click and enter the delete support mode. Then click and select the branches you want to delete, and press the delete key on your keyboard. This will remove all the deleted branches.